Hey, my name is JC and welcome to the Pro Talk Podcast brought to you by House Call Pro, the software that's used by tens of thousands of home service professionals used all across the country to run their businesses. In this episode, you're going to be meeting Daniel White. He's the owner of Bigger Better Movers out of Oklahoma City, and he's going to share with you the interesting experience he had by taking his background in insurance and technology and investing it all into his company that is now thriving and successful as a moving company in Oklahoma City. He loves to invest in people. He loves to invest in the community. And we hope that this episode not only brings you an encouragement, but provides strategies on how you can grow your business. Well, today we have our friend Daniel White. He is the owner of Bigger Better Movers in Oklahoma City, and he is uh, here to share some wisdom and just his story and how he's adjusting, uh, considering the interesting season that we're in as a in these extraordinary times uh, as a country. And so we are delighted to have him. Uh, he's uh, very much involved in our pro community. And so we're going to get into some of that as well. And I'm sure he has some words of encouragement and some wisdom to share for us today. So thank you so much for joining us on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, you know, first, first things first, let's start off by you telling us how did you get started on this business? Did you dream of owning your own company straight from the get go? Yeah, thanks. Uh, heck of a story. So I used to be in the insurance business for five years. Never really dreamed about moving. Actually, never even worked for a moving company when I was younger. And so after five years, uh, I'm an entrepreneur by trade. And as you guys know, you guys do a lot of tech stuff. So most everybody, especially everyone here knows about Home Advisor, Angie's List. The same thing is true in the insurance business. And so we use a lot of stuff called like Quote Wizard and All Web Leads. Essentially, it's lead generation. And so I saw a huge market in lead generation. I, I thought that I knew how to do it better myself. And, and I still believe that I do. However, what I underestimated was a financial um, responsibility that comes with customer acquisition, not only tech as far as building the website. You know, so funny, um, I don't get too mad at you guys when I see on the, on the chats, everybody want updated features. I know what it takes to crunch out some updated features. So um, I don't complain too much about that. But anyways, I want to do lead generation and found a way that I believe it'd be better for insurance agents to be able to connect with people in the area. Well, anyways, lost six figures trying to do that and had to sell a lot of stuff, try to just, you know, scramble, go back to what I know. And when I thought about it, what I actually knew or what my low hanging fruit was is insurance agents, mortgage loan officers, realtors, tons of them. And I love service-based business, you know, where you don't have to actually sell or create a product, but instead I just provide a level of service for that service in exchange, I get compensated. And so, you know, I sat around, my buddy tells a story pretty good, but we were sitting down, sitting down one day, literally at the bar drinking. And he said, so what are you going to do? And I just told him, I said, man, I need to generate some revenue. And I thought about it. And by the end of the beer, I told him, I'm going to start a moving company. And he says, man, a week later, you came back and you had bought a truck and got the paperwork started. And I literally didn't know anything about moving. I self-educated myself, built a brand and kind of came into the business that way. Well, considering the amount of networks that one builds, you know, being in the insurance agency, right. um, I find it fascinating that you decided, well, yes, I get it that you would start your own business, but why, why moving? Yeah. In I wish I had a, I wish I had a better answer other than, you know, it just kind of fell on my lap and I didn't know if it was lucrative. And so when I weighed my options, I thought about everything I could do with the money I had and what I was willing to invest in. Worst case scenario, I try moving and moving doesn't work. Essentially, my all in cost is a box truck and I hired one or two guys. Right. So I can always recoup my costs. If worst case scenario, it fails. I don't have too much skin in the game. Right. And so, of course, the bigger we get, the more skin I got in the game, the more financial responsibility I have, the more risk I have and all that. Um, but to start, it was an easy deal to kind of dabble in, see if I was going to like it, see, you know, um, everything that would be required for me to be legally compliant, insurance uh, regulations. And so, you know, that was very comfortable for me as well, just because I come from insurance. So knowing about the right insurance coverages we need to have and making sure work comps in place and what that does for us and make sure that the money that we do make, I'm able to uh, protect it at the same time. Nice. And if you don't mind me asking, how long ago was this? How old were you when you decided, you know, so you had just lost a ton of money and you're like, I'm going to start this business. How old were you at the time? Yeah. So I actually started this company in August of 2017. So I was 27 whenever that happened. I'm 30 now. And so 
Yeah, my insurance agency, I had a, I was a farmer's agent, but the way the farmer's contracts are written in Oklahoma, I essentially own my book of business. So not only was I self-employed, I essentially owned all the commission rights. And so I sold that business. And when I sold that business, I was able to take that capital and reinvest in a few other things. Bought some real estate, did my biggest loss was the tech company, which is really why I sold out. And then started this in 2017, about 12 to 15 months after selling my agency just because I walked straight out of my agency. We were building it, the tech website for eight months, kind of hush hush behind closed doors. And so it was supposed to launch not too long after I had actually sold my insurance agency. Wow. Yeah. And, and when you started uh, your company, I'm assuming it was you and you said that you hired two other dudes. It, it was, it was myself and one of my childhood friends and he actually still works with me to this day. And he's one of our team leads and he didn't have a stable job before he was at his story was he was actually going to go to an interview that week to work with, with somebody else. And I kind of convinced him otherwise. And I said, Hey man, just give me a shot. Let's see what we can do with this deal. And, you know, for a long time, he worked for less than what he was probably worth and made sure that my trucks were on the road and that we were, you know, taking care of stuff. And I'm better on the operational side of things. And he's better in the field dealing with customers and being able to run and operate those trucks. And so he's been with us the entire time. And now we've got 10 guys and three trucks and we'll be bringing on an office manager hopefully this week. Wow. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Thank you. So when, when we go back to those early days uh, and you're talking a little bit about lead generation, what was your approach in terms of, gathering your customers because i mean it, the truth be told i mean i've i moved from one city to another i've honestly heard horror stories of yeah. people like losing your stuff or you know trying to shimmy you for some extra cash because they're like well it's going to take this much and this happened over here and we got delayed over there so just crazy different stories left and right and and i can't help but as a consumer on the consumer side of things there's a lot of movers out there and so yeah. how do how did you rise above the rest of them and get your business rolling? Great question. Great question. And so the first thing I would tell you, even on my trucks today, it says Oklahoma's only flat rate moving company. Now we don't charge any extra costs, no hidden fees. There's not like mileage and we don't tar charge for stair steps, assembly, anything like that. We try to keep it as simple as possible. You know, and when it comes to moving consumers, I understand both sides. I am a consumer and I'm also an owner operator, right? Consumers don't see it to be fair that if it, as a moving company, I say, you know what, we're going to come move you. But by the way, you have to pay me gas and time and mileage from the time that I leave my warehouse house. And you're going to say, well, that's not really fair because I don't know if your guys stopped to get a snack or they stopped at the gas station. What if there's a traffic jam and you're, you know, in a little bit flustered in a bad situation, it's not a positive experience for you. And so for us, what we did is we don't start billing to the time that we actually leave or sorry, we don't start billing until we actually arrive at your house on site and on premise. Okay. The other things that we do, we also have uh, free online booking. And so most companies, doesn't matter if it's moving or not, they require some type of deposit in order to book or reserve their services. We do not. And yeah, sometimes we get cancellations. Sometimes, you know, it, it sucks that, you know, we had our guys ready to go. Truck was here. I had to pay those guys to come in and somebody cancels. Well, we kind of eliminated that on the back end by just calling the customers the day before. Hey, just want to make sure that you're ready for your move. We'll be there tomorrow between this time and that time. Right. Um, but as a convenience thing and able for us to be able to, to, to reserve, uh, our schedule and make sure that it's as full as possible. We have the no deposit, which lures people in. They're like, well, if I don't, if I'm not, if my feet aren't held to the fire, I'm able to make a decision now. It's a transactional decision rather than an emotional sell. And so when you sell insurance, especially life insurance, you got to talk to, you know, spouse, you got to talk to mom and dad or relatives. You got to figure out all that stuff. It's never a one day sale. As long as my pricing remains as simple as possible, I don't, I don't have to reel you in with a deposit or a financial commitment. Essentially, people don't like to be sold, but they like to be told. So they want to see options and then kind of lead them in the direction that you want them to go. Um, and so we worked really, really hard on making sure our website also has publicly posted rates. So all of our rates, you go to our website, publicly posted. There's nothing to hide. You know, you can call my competitors, ask them. My rates are online. Everything's clear and concise. We get a lot of online bookings now just because when you go there, it's my job to make sure everything that you see is clear, it's concise, it's to the point, and it's not a lot of – people don't like to read a lot of words, but they like to get as much value out of the content that you have. So it's just short and it's to the point. And then we have the free online booking. 
Um, and then our ratings and reviews, you know, we worked on those for so, so long with ratings and reviews. And right now there's only three companies in Oklahoma city with over 200 reviews. We're one of the three. And out of all those, no one has over 4.7 stars and we have 4.7 stars. Wow. So, you know, when you see us online and you see our presence and, and you see our website and everything else, I mean, people have a level of trust when it comes to hiring us because it's, it's not, it's not shady. It's transparent and it's easy to work with online. And even if you call, you know, that's pretty amazing. Now I'm tying in, you know, it's all making sense to me as you're talking about a little bit of your history, your employment history, your business yeah. history, your tech history. Yeah. When it comes to insurance, that could be just the most daunting. I mean, you're talking about fine print yeah. and reading and you're like, ah, yeah. you know, what is that? What are the hidden things that are in here? It just makes you so nervous that you yeah. got to hire somebody else to go take a look at certain contracts, et cetera. And, and you then, know, one of the cool things too, um, because my background is in insurance, and I did business the right way the first time. A lot of people who I had relationships with in the past actually circled back around and actually became a lot of my vendors. And so if you think about it, brand new house just bought out there in San Diego. So congrats. Let's say that thing, um, God forbid, floods. Well, you're going to call your insurance company. Your insurance company is then going to send a restoration company out to mitigate the risk. They're going to come in, set up the dryers and do all that. What the restoration company does not want to do is move all your stuff out of the way so they can get to work. And so one of our low hanging fruits that I'd be lying if I say I thought about it before I started, but because I knew every restoration company, because in my past life, when I was in the insurance business, I, saw, I sent them a lot of work. And now on the flip side, because I knew I did good business, I didn't get ran out of insurance. I had a successful agency. They said, well, they gave it, they gave it, they waited on me because of course they've got big businesses and a lot of clients that they have to be accountable towards. So they wanted to make sure I was in it. But once I was in it, they knew my, my structure was in place and my guys were there. We do all the restoration companies. I say all of them, all the main ones or major ones in the state of Oklahoma or in Oklahoma city, we service them as the, one of their vendors. Wow. So man, you started this not that long ago. When you think about the, the, you know, and I want to get back into the online booking, and I'm sure people have questions about that, uh, you know, the transparency and, oh, man, are they going to lose out on, you know, putting their prices against their competitors? Because I know people, you know, our pros think about that. But when yeah. you think about the success that, that you have gotten to today only in such a short amount of time, I'm sure you've studied and seen other, of you know, some of your other competitors, other pros that are in the same industry. What are some of the mistakes you see them making that, uh, could could easily be adjusted and fixed to help them grow in their business. Yeah. And so I think huge, huge shout out to House Call Pro because the automation, the level of communication is everything. So one of my favorite words is clear communication is great communication. And so a lot of times, even to my guys, I repeat myself two or three times because I want to make sure that the instructions I gave you are not going to be um, deviated from and that we all are on the exact same page, right? I think some of the simplest things that you can do. And again, Amazon and Google have trained us as consumers that things do need to be publicly posted. I mean, imagine if you went to Amazon and they were like, hey, it's this book and it's this book. Which one do you want? There's no pricing. Imagine you went to Walmart and you're looking at two different coffee makers and there's no pricing and you just got to go to the register and then guess. Well, at that point, I'm probably, especially on the internet, I'm going to walk away. You know, what's untrackable to us as business owners is how many people go to your website and we don't know why they left. So you know how many people leave, but you don't know why they leave. My thought process or my guess would be one of the simple th simplest things you could do is, is give the consumers essentially what they're looking for. And what they're looking for is price, availability. And again, House Call Pro does that with the free online booking. You It ties right into my schedule, right? And so they can say, oh, well, he, he has Tuesday at two o'clock or Wednesday at 9 a.m. Great. So they can pick everything themselves. We also use a lot of task automation. So along with House Call Pro, we use Zapier. I call it Zapier. Zapier does task automation, right? And so when people book, House Call Pro tells Zapier when to do it. It has a trigger response system. And so then we have a 15 bullet email that's automated and also trackable. It copies me and all my team leaders on the same email and it allows them to know what to expect up front before we even arrive on site. That allows a level of consistency from the experience standpoint, not only from my staff, but more importantly for the consumers, when the customers, when we get there, everyone's on the same page. We know we move every day. Our customers don't. How would they know what to put in a box or how to be best prepared? And so we've used, you know, Zapier, House Call Pro, we we'll use uh, GroupMe for internal communication systems within for my team. We have bots on our website. So like you guys have the chat, 
uh, where you can chat live. That bot actually goes directly to my cell phone. So even at 11 at night, someone comes to my website, they might have one or two questions. I answer them and guess what? They book online, right? Um, our, our voicemail on our business phone, it says, hey, if sorry we missed you or whatever the, the saying is, but on there at some point it says, and if you're looking to make a reservation, you can visit our website at biggerbettermovers.com and we do offer free online booking. I've been amazed like in a meeting and maybe I see my phone ring and it goes to voicemail. And then 10 minutes later, I get a new job alert and it's the same phone or the same name that I just saw call my phone, but I trained the customer to be able to go that way. Right. What, uh, was that a hard transition for you to, to, to be so transparent or was that just kind of like, nah, this is, this is what customers want. This is, this is the day that they, uh, this is, this is how things are done. And, and I'll say this, I, I, I have to say this too, because, um, uh, you know, we're, we're back here in California. We are shelter in place still kind of uh, slow, yeah. slow moving, slow moving back to normal. And, uh, I hit the gym. And so obviously I've been trying to hold out to see if, uh, if I could get back to the gym, I probably won't go. It's like a cesspool of germs, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm trying to find equipment on Amazon and, uh, and it's so funny that you mentioned the transparency because it's not just that I want to see a picture of it. Right. I kind of want to see what size it is. Because yeah. there are photos, and to elaborate, there are photos where there are like full six foot dudes standing next to the machine, and you're like, okay, that's a real deal. Because you know, sometimes you order something and it just looks, yeah. you assume it's bigger yeah. than it actually is. Yeah. yeah, I can read it, but I mean, if I can see it, if, if it's transparent, yeah. you're absolutely right about how we're conditioned to do that as consumers today. Um, and, and it's a level of psychology along with it. I mean, it's a level of psychology that a lot of people from a sales standpoint don't really understand that they don't even know what drew them to make a specific purchasing decision and understanding that and knowing what consumers are looking for subconsciously. Like you said, if I'm selling gym equipment, great example. I would have a six foot guy standing next to my equipment, you know, and say, hey, actual dimensions or something. Right. Because, again, you as a consumer, it builds a, a certain level of trust that somebody else or your competitors haven't thought about. Yeah, because, you know, people there's so much business out there and people are, you know, sadly, yeah. people don't care as much about providing that customer service. They may get a bad rating here or there, but yeah. if they can get their dollar back and 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 increase their margin somehow and gyp somebody it's really sad that sometimes they're like well we, we put a picture on there so yeah. too bad you know yeah and you know go along with that too i think house call pro does a really good job of this also but it's all about knowing who your customer is everyone's not your customer you know i have a certain level of regard for a company who doesn't again show their their prices or you want to tell me all this stuff I, I don't care to be the cheapest and i don't want to be the cheapest I want to be middle of the road, good quality product. You know, you, you get what you pay for. So if you want my guys to be W2 and be on salary and do this every day for a living and be professional movers, guess what? I got to be compensated and make sure my guys are paid. OK. And so too many people harp on the price when in reality, again, everyone's not your customer. I don't care if I'm the cheapest. And guess what? I will tell a customer I'm worth the extra five dollars. And here's why. My guys are W-2 employees. We have free online booking. Um, we have all the right insurance, right? I know what it costs to operate with all the insurance and licenses and everything like that that we have to do to be compliant with the state. And so I'm worth the extra money and I'm not everybody's customer. You know, if you want me to come in and move two things, it's going to take 30 minutes. I'm sorry, but we have a two hour time minimum because we don't start billing till we arrive on site and on location. I can't cover cost to drive 30 minutes with two guys with gas and mileage and maintenance and labor for a hundred dollars. Not that I don't want it. I'm not, I'm going to lose money on it. <laughs> right. You know, so you got to cut yourself off somewhere and, and know what customers that you do serve and then be able to price yourself somewhere in the market that's competitive. But again, just to reiterate one more time, like pricing on the website is one of the greatest things that we have done to be transparent. And a lot of kickback I hear, especially from like electricians, plumbers, they say, oh, well, it's hard to tell somebody over the internet what it's going to cost because I don't know until I look at it. <laughs> Me too. I'm a mover. So I don't know. But what we do is say, Hey, here's our hourly rate. Here's what's included with that hourly rate. Here's what may be extra. And it's all in the description, bigger, better movers.com. You guys can go there check it out. And it's very short to the point when they book, we try to call within 24 to 48 hours. And that conversation is, Hey, thanks for booking with us online. Uh, greatly appreciate you using our services. Just want to confirm your date and time and also the scope of work. What are we going to be doing for you when we arrive for you at this date on this time? 
At that time, I got my headset in and I'm entering the notes and we're going to have a clear conversation of everything that they need done, discuss maybe additional pricing. And I always say, based on my experience, I expect this to be two guys. We might need one extra truck or plan on three to four hours again, because clear communication is key. So we have that conversation. I also confirmed that they got my automated email that went through Zapier. They don't know it went through Zapier, but that's on the back end. And so they got an email from me with their personal name on it. And it's 14 or 15 bullet points. Is there any questions or concerns about it? You know, mattress covers are extra. We accept cash check or card, 3% processing on cards. It just lines everything out on the front end that whenever consumers do business with us, and they have a positive experience. By, by the time we get to them, they've already had a great time. All we got to do is close the deal now and then ask for the review at the, at the end. Wow. You know, it's, um, you obviously have very high standards for, uh, for obviously running your company as successful as it is. And I want to get into a little bit of like uh, how you train your employees, how you hire, but I, you know, I, I, I do wonder, because you brought this up, is you chose House Call Pro, and you have yeah. a high-tech background, uh, you know, owning, you know, an insurance company uh, and, and the commissions to that and everything. I'm sure you did a lot of research before choosing um, the system like ours. Uh, why why us? Yeah, good, good question. Thanks for asking. Um, essentially, with House Call Pro, it incorporates everything in one platform. I appreciate what you guys try to do. And I did not know before I joined, but it, it's it's increased my loyalty to House Call Pro as a company, the way that I see you guys work on your own business, right? Like, it's not just like, here's the platform. Like, for instance, we use Nextiva for a phone. They never do updates. I'm like, these guys are the house call pros crunching them out. So I appreciate you guys listening to your customer and then making those um, updates. But when, when I originally signed up, I saw that you guys did invoicing, dispatching, billing, all that was incorporated where before, especially as a small business owner, you know, you probably use QuickBooks. Um, you got to keep track of your invoices. You're hand calling your appointments. They're in Google Calendar. You're collecting money through QuickBooks. It's Dual like all entry. different applications. Yeah. yeah. It's all over the place where when I use you guys, it's all included. There's one simple price I pay and it's definitely worth the money. It's definitely worth the money. So I definitely appreciate you guys. Dude, we appreciate you. We do. We do. We Thank love, you. I love the, I love how we're a community of pros, right? It's like, uh, it's pretty dope because I'll have these podcasts and I'll make friends in different, you know, uh, cities through mastermind. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a videographer first, so I'll sometimes go out there and do some testimonials and shoot a couple you know, uh, commercials and just kind of learn the experience of the pros. And I love what you guys do because I, I, I'm an entrepreneur, you know, cool. uh, when, when it comes to, you know, business and telling stories uh, through video and, and things of like that. And so when I see you guys, I feel like I, I live vicariously through you. So <laughs> I love it. Love it. Um, being as we're talking about the and I mentioned the community, you're a huge part of the community, too, because uh, it was Chad Sajovic, our community, um, uh, our community dude over at House Call Pro. He leads our, yep. our communities. Uh, who are now meeting online. Um, what, how'd you get involved in that? Um, so I think I went to the first meeting, community me meeting, and it was actually in Tulsa, Oklahoma, rather than Oklahoma City. And Chad's lived here before. So, and I didn't know Chad too well at the time. I'd have given, given him a little bit more of a hard time about it. But Tulsa to Oklahoma City, I mean, it's just, you got to go OKC first, you know? And so the first community meeting was in Tulsa. I drove up there with a couple of buddies of mine who are also members of House Call Pro. So we drove up there, we attended it. Um, it's just engaged. It's a lady named Cassie that runs that up there. And anyways, Oklahoma City opportunity opened up. We chatted about it. I told him, I, you know, I don't mind running, heading it up. And we did it. And so I've been kind of running Oklahoma City the entire time since uh, it came here. Nice. And our pro meetings, uh, obviously, because of the uh, interesting season that we're in uh, with the with the COVID-19, we've gone digitally. So we're online. Yeah. We got a pros meeting online, which kind of breaks down a bunch of barriers, right? Because you're talking about not having to drive and, you know, yeah. all that, you know, messing with the schedule and all that stuff. You could probably even hop on. I'm sure you could hop on to uh, we've got we got them industry specific now because, you know, you don't you don't have yeah. to go to a certain city meetup online uh, no. to, to attend. Um, what's that been like for you guys? You know, I actually enjoy the online so much better. Again, not only from the, the small benefit is, yeah, safe drive time, having to get dressed up, put a suit and tie on and lead the meeting and, you know, coordinate with food and checking out and make sure the bill's paid and doing all that stuff and, and sending the receipt back and doing all that. Now I can just sit on the computer, saves my time, it's much more efficient, but more so even as a quote unquote community leader, 
I like to sit back and listen to all the feedback of all the other pros and what they bring. And not only within my city, but regionally. So in Texas and Kansas and Arkansas, everywhere around me and what's working for them. You know, I don't know, you probably know better than I do how many movers are in house call pro, but most of the meetups I go to, there doesn't seem to be a lot. Most people seem to be plumbers or electricians or garage door folks or something like that. Um, and I don't see a lot of movers. So, but the, but the feedback that I get and what I do learn from their conversations, again, just being the service industry, we do a lot of the same things. So, you know, we all market online through Google Guarantee, home advisor, all this stuff. And so that way we can kind of go back and forth. And every time that I listen in, I mean, I just, I get value bombs. And, and can you, for those who have yet to be a part of it uh, or, or join in, um, what, what can they expect? And they obviously don't have to be a house call pro user to, yeah. to attend, right? Correct. Correct. And so I think the people that do attend, those are the movers and the shakers, you know, everybody, everybody who is a member, they kind of just do, you know, maybe just the minimum or they just kind of get by the people who are really engaged and really active and want to grow their business and interested in learning and or giving advice or giving back on what's working for them. Those are the people who are engaged. And a lot of times if people are engaged outside of their business in the community and networking, they're just as engaged and on fire whenever they are in this community group, you know, and so they're able to give you things and nuggets that maybe you wouldn't have gotten anywhere else or took you two years to learn. You know, I listen to a lot of podcasts as well. And one of my favorite little coin terms is from Tony Robbins. And it is his term is turn decades into days. And so essentially by me attending an event, what may have took me two years to figure out or 18 months to figure out by literally going to one meeting and making one connection. And a lot of, I mean, anyone, I haven't seen anyone not um, offer their direct contact number, an email address to get a hold of. You know, I, I, I specifically reach out to those people and say, hey, how'd you do this? And how could I do this better? And you're able to learn from a community of people who do essentially what you do every day. Um, and so turning decades into days, is one of the main things, you know, uh, something else I heard the other day, people always talk about how much experience they have. Well, based on years, but if you've been doing the same thing for 10 years and your business has been flat for 10 years, I would argue you don't have a lot of other experience. Mm -hmm. You've just doing, been doing what you know really, really well, but you fail to be able to grow as a person or an owner operator. And so if you want to grow and take things to that next level, you need to be surrounding yourself with people who look like you, think like you, do the same things as you. And we all look alike. We're all members of House Call Pro, right? We're all members of House Call Pro. We're all service-based owners or operators. And so we're around the right people and the right conversation to be able to foster that, that mindset and spark that thought that's going to allow us to be able to change something big or small in our business that makes it just that much better. That's awesome. As, as you obviously are, you're a learner, like many, many leaders who are constantly evolving. I just find that they're constantly learning. They're constantly, there's never, there's never a time for them not to learn something. They could be oh, yeah. in, the, in the, in the game for 20, 25 years and they're still learning. And I love that. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, uh, you know, leaders are readers, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, you, you know, I'm sure we'll get into a couple of books that uh, you could you could recommend to us. Um, you've got the tech down, you got the systems down, you understand uh, your customer. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, hiring and your team, like culture. Um, so you you it was you and a, a childhood buddy. Yep. You guys evolved, grew to what size the next year and you know, as you were thinking about that next step, what were you looking for in terms of the right employee, the right team member? Yeah, good question. So one thing I never do, and people may disagree, but I never hire based on experience for what I do. So to be a videographer, you probably need to have a little bit of experience. Um, to be in the, the insurance business, which I've been in, to be in the moving business, you can teach anybody either one of those skills. They can get the license, meet the requisites, have the requirements, whatever. I hire the person. Okay. So as long as the person is a good fit, meaning they come to work every day with a smile on their face, you know, one of our core values, we have five is have fun. That's the fifth one. Have fun. You're around these people all day, as much as you're around your family. What I don't want to do is come to work and have you, you know, just stale face and, you know, mean mugging and, and not having a positive attitude because we got to go to work and maybe, you know, one day if it's too hot today, well, it's going to be too cold in January. And if it's too cold, then it's going to be raining in May. And I don't want to hear that. You know, I just want to get the job done. We're going to do our best collectively to take care of the people. So when I hire, man, I, I seriously, I just, I hire the person themselves, a little bit of experience, but I want somebody who is uh, proactive, 
very, very positive, optimistic. Like you have to be optimistic. And I think a lot of even my staff to it to because they invest in me also as a leader. And so for them to invest their time and their trust in me that I'm going to make the right, not only financial decisions, but business decisions to take this coming forward and present ourselves the right way and hire the right people. They put a lot of trust in me as well, you know? And so I put a lot of time into hiring the right people. We have a three-step interview process where, you know, if we hire online, first interview is over the phone. And I want two face-to-face -face interviews. I don't care if you're a household good mover, one of my team leads, or uh, office manager. Everyone has going to get an MBR, so a motor vehicle report. You know, as simple as that sounds, whether you drive my truck or not. But if you if you drive crazy on the street or get a lot of tickets, at a certain point in time, it's a level of responsibility. You know, and, and if you don't have care or regard for anybody else on the road, you're probably not going to have too much care for me in my business. Okay. And so I make sure everyone has reliable transportation because if you have reliable transportation, well, you don't have to ask one of my team leads to take you home because now that's putting stress on one of my guys who feels like they're doing more for a company than they're getting paid for. Right. So it's all the little things like psychological things that I look at that make a big difference to me. So as long as you have a positive attitude, you got your own transportation, uh, you come to work every day, I'm going to verify your references. I mean, all that stuff we look for in candidates. And so far, we've been so good. The other thing I live by, fire fast, hire slow. If somebody is giving you issues, I know everybody has it. I fired one of my best friends before. And I had to, I had, I had to make the decision. And we didn't talk for over two years because of it. But hey, business, I always say I never mix business and pleasure. Pleasure also means personal. I never mix the two, okay? And so doing that, I was hesitant to for, a, for a many, many reasons. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I was hesitant for many, many reasons. And we end up having to literally, I just let her go with no, I mean, she knows why she got let go, but I let her go for skipping out on work early and not telling me basically. And I knew if I let that slide, I would then be setting an example for everybody else. So, you know, fire fast, hire slow, live by that. And then also treat people the right way. As a leader, I got to treat people the right way. And I used to play basketball in college. And when I play ball in college, you know, they're paying you six figures to play basketball and you're supposed to be the man or whatever. But when the coach came in the gym, and this is just my experience with my college coach, he wouldn't even acknowledge us. I mean, the first thing he says is blows a whistle and he says, get on the baseline. You know, maybe a hello would have been nice. But how was your night? Did you finish your homework? Something. So this one of the simplest things I do, I always make sure I just fist bump my guys in the morning. Hey, good morning. How are you? Look them in the face. Hey, how are you? Doing okay today? Good to see you. Just greet them and then tell them what to do. But at first, I, I just greet them at first. And many of them, all of them, one in particular, he said, man, no disrespect, but I don't really see you as my boss. I see you more like somebody like, like I'm close to you know, and so it allows me whenever we're out in the field and we got to do something a little bit extra for a customer, those guys really have my back and they know I have theirs as well. Yeah. There's a deep respect there. That's obvious, yeah. right? It's like, yeah. you know, when you're, when you're taken care of, I mean, people, people will, people can get paid the most amount of money and they'll run for the hills if they have a horrible boss yeah, and then seriously. the vice versa. It's like, you could not get paid as much, but if the culture is perfect and it's, it's like, why risk it? Why even leave? It's like so good. Right. Yeah. And I don't want to say that we're perfect because we don't have a perfect culture by any means, but we did have a guy leave. He thought I was asking too much. He wasn't getting paid enough. And he quickly found out he left us. And uh, two weeks later, he didn't leave in a bad way. I'm all about second chance. I talked to my guys about him. Everybody missed him and he ended up missing us. And so he reached out and said, hey, man, can I discuss maybe, you know, coming back to the team? And so I met with him and, and literally, I mean, he just apologized and said, I didn't know how good that I had it and I miss you guys and I want to come back over and I'm even willing to start back from the bottom. I know my pay is going to be cut and I just want to start at the bottom and work my way back up, but I'm going to appreciate the opportunity this time. Man, that's so amazing. We, we, you know, we'd appreciate to have him. So that's super cool because, uh, you know, a, a lot of times people just can't swallow the pride and be like, well, yeah. you left us. So no, the door yeah. shut, kick them to the curb. Um, so thankful, thankful that that's not the case for that guy. Um, you were talking about uh, this being the fifth culture of the, the fifth value, the core value of having yeah. fun. Can you tell us the four other uh, values Man, you have? You will put me on the spot. Let me see if I got <laughs> one. Hold on. I think I got one right here. Oh, good thing it's didn't record it or live. No, it's good. Oh. It's good. 
I mean, that, for you to say that the that the have fun is is of you know that memorable importance, it just goes to say that the other ones are being followed. That you don't have to, you know, they just come natural, yeah. if you will. Yeah. And one thing that we did too, so we hired uh, one of the main things I did this year. So I keep telling my guys that we invest in you not only professionally but also personally. So we hired a like business. He was a business coach. Very success. Got rid of that company, and now he does. So I have him come in. Uh, actually, he's coming in twice a month before COVID. So every other week he'd come in. We'd have a group session, and he would come in and we work on these guys. You know, like how to say like my pleasure. And he told a story how he lost a huge contract because he had a back end worker who one of the owners of a of a company was coming to pick up product. The back back end staff didn't know who this guy was. He just thought he worked for this company. Turned out it was the owner of the company, and he had to jump on a truck real quick because one of his guys didn't show in. So up. Uh, well, he was rude to that guy, ended up being the owner of that company, and he lost the entire contract, right? It's real life experience. So, but it's a great story to tell to my guys on why we should always be respectful. I always talk about, you know, hey, every time you have that brand on, people are watching. Whether you think so or not, they are watching. You know, don't smoke on a job site. If you want to smoke, smoke in the truck while they're moving. But there's certain things that we don't do in public, and it's just being cognizant about it. And then also go back to the point, just growing them personally and professionally. And they know that I'm paying physical dollars for them just to get better like how to manage money better how to speak better like why we do things a certain way how to present yourself you know things like that that whether they're with me or not they know i've actually made investment in them as well nice nice um speaking of the covid uh you know what was we've been i've been talking to different pros and it's been fun to you know, I talked to Mark Mazgan. He's a H HVAC guy out in Brooklyn, New York, and you see New York on the news a lot, and you yeah. see other people in NorCal, and so it's been interesting to hear these different experiences. You know, when when this whole uh, uh, pandemic was, you know, really coming out. What what was yeah. that like for you guys, and for you, and for your company? Uh, how did you guys feel about uh, moving forward, and how has it impacted business for you? Yeah, so originally we felt like anybody else. We were concerned. We didn't know if we were essential or non-essential. Uh, we're waiting on that list to come out. I was. I didn't. I don't really ever let my guys see me sweat. So I was nervous, to say the least, to know if we were going to be deemed essential or non-essential. Luckily, we were. Uh, as soon as I found out that we were, I know that systems and processes would mean a lot. And I knew that I had to gain my guys' trust. If we were going to be able to operate, they needed to have confidence in me as a leader going forward that I not only protected our customers, but more importantly, our internal staff. And that if I'm putting them in the field during this epidemic, that they know that I have skin in the game, that I'm looking out for them. And then I'm hearing all of their concerns. I'm doing everything in my power to make sure that they're as safe as possible because they're also thinking about their significant others, you know, their kids, their friends that they're around and they're like, but the money's not worth it. And I definitely understand that. And then my concern is, well, for me to be able to pay everybody, we need to figure out a way to be able to do that. So we were very concerned. We implemented a lot of a lot of protocol to be able to do so. And so we hired a company. They started spraying what's called a Enviro Shield every 10 days in our truck. And it's a chemical reactive. I'm not sure the scientifics of it, but essentially he sprays the entire cab, the bed of the truck, everything. It's supposed to last two to three weeks. But again, we spray them every 10 days just to feel a little bit more safe. Our guys see that process take place and the guys come out with the mask on. Again, gives a little bit of confidence to our staff. Um, I reached out to another guy that owns a biotech company here in Oklahoma City. He supplied us with, we had never, ever, luckily, had to go without hand sanitizer. And so we were buying it by the leader. We put in every single truck. We had small little custom bottles made, four ounce bottles, that we were actually even donating and giving away for people. We had plenty of those uh, using a lot of hand sanitizer. We also started having all of our staff follow behind our trucks. And so we would only, my team leaders are very, very important to us because they not only drive my truck safely to each job site, a lot of times they're the point of contact to the customer in the field. And they also stack the trucks as well for weight distribution and everything like that. They run the entire crew out there. So my job is to make sure that they're also protected as possible. We made sure that the rest of our staff, we paid the additional gas money expense to be able to have our staff follow behind our trucks in, our car, in their cars. So again, just taking social distancing to another level where they could follow behind the truck while our main guys drove the truck, our team leaders drove the truck, you know, um, but doing a bunch of stuff like that, our guys have really, I asked them the other day, because in Oklahoma City, we're already 
phase two. We're in phase two as of four days ago. And so as of phase one, I told them, I said, hey, I still want to implement the same systems, the same processes. You guys are still going to be following behind at least for another 30 days. We'll see how this deal pans out. And I asked them, is there anything that I can be doing to make you guys feel any better or any more safe? The answer was no. No one had anything to say. And I got 10 guys. So that that said a little bit to me, just knowing that I do have their trust and their confidence and that I am listening to them and we're making the right decisions. Nice. That's that is what is what is stage what does phase two even look like uh, for, for think, your area? Yeah, I think phase two was just basically bars and restaurants can now open. So phase one was like workout facilities and some other deals like that. And then phase two was now you can go to bars and restaurants, but but you have to implement social distancing. So a lot of the bars have taken bar stools out. The restaurants have taken a lot of tabletops out of commission, either physically remove the table or put like, you know, don't sit there. And so they've done that. Did you guys find a dip um, where, where people still moving during that time? And this is the funny thing, because I, I had to move during that time. Yeah, and I was going to say, like, actually- how do I do this? <laughs> <laughs> on this move like and, and i i mean i kid you not it was like the day before everything just shut down i uh, was like i i don't even know if i can get a u-haul you right. know it was like that yeah. but yeah. during that period of uh you guys being shelter in place there uh, what, did business slow down or did you find that people were still moving it's not, it's you know, not exactly a thing that you could necessarily adjust when it's time to move you just almost gotta just go Seriously. And, 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 you know, it really can't slow down for this for the sense that we're tied into the real estate market. And so as long as people are buying homes and real estate is still being sold, we're still a necessity. And so some people young and fit like yourself or like me, you can maybe get some buddies together and move yourself. But think about all the either elderly people, disabled people, people who don't have time. So you have time constraints because they're an executive of some company and it's crazy as heck at work. And so they have more money and less time. And so they just hire us to come in and take care of it. It's a thousand reasons. The only thing that we really stopped doing during COVID was assisted living facilities and nursing homes. And it wasn't even the, everything that we implemented, our guys were comfortable to be able to go in and operate in that environment it was that the facility wouldn't actually let us in, okay? We've done maybe two of them the entire time uh, during this pandemic. And one of them, the lady had to talk to the CEO of the company and it went on for weeks before we could even get in and we had to strategically plan the time and the day and do all the stuff. The other one, it was a kid, their kid, the kids, their parent died, like the mom or the dad died in the nursing facility. And so they had to get in and remove the stuff. Well, of course, you know, they charge monthly and they make money by billing it out to people. So there's one other lady up in Tulsa that we have to go get. Well, she's here. Her parents are in Tulsa. And again, same thing. Parent died. Well, they're not letting anybody move running around. Well, she's also saying she, she's trying to be out by June 1 because it's $3,500 a month for the assisted living facility. So which doesn't make sense because they're also not letting her get the stuff out or they're going to bill it. So that she's trying horrible. to figure that out. Yeah, it's terrible. Man. It's terrible. So she's trying to figure that out, get on our schedule. But that's really the only thing that has slowed down. Other than that, we've been jam packed. Nice. Nice. What's uh, what, what is the future uh, of the company? Where do you see yourself in uh, in five years? Yeah, good question. So really, right now, um, we will be in Tulsa here soon. And then also I want to I want to hit South Southwest. So Dallas, maybe Austin, San Antonio, Houston, things like that. Phoenix is a good place. A lot of things come to consideration when it looks at new markets. So, you know, the amount of people who go in and out, um, new businesses starting, people coming in, big business is always good for us. Also, weather. Weather is a main deal for moving. You know, I don't want to move up north where it's cold. You got to deal with rain a lot, things like that. Dallas, uh, I think even San Diego has great weather quite often, stuff like that. You want to, we want to say south, southwest. That's easy to manage. Also, I don't want to physically take Oklahoma, bigger, better movers across state lines. It's a different type of license to cross state lines and you're under federal regulation as opposed to state. However, if I incorporate in Dallas with another branch or another franchise location, I guess you would call it, if I have another location down there and get a DOT number in Texas, I'd be, oper- I'd be able to operate the entire state of Texas Boom. without having to quote unquote cross state lines. So I'd be able to keep my costs lower without being under federal regulation and have a lot of land mass or land area 
to be able to operate. So that's really on the forefront of my mind. Nice. You've given us a lot of wisdom and strategy and real great specifics that I think that our viewers, our listeners, our pros out there can really add in terms of growing uh, in their experience of owning their business and taking their business to the next level. I want to transition to uh, one of my new favorite segments. It's called Bad Review Time. Okay. And um, I think I told you this on the phone that uh, to, to get a, a, a bad review ready to ready to rock. Would you read one of your bad reviews and uh, tell us how you felt and how you responded? Let me pull one up because I forgot about that segment. And I'll pull one up here real quick. I'll just, we don't get a lot. That's good. And yet, a four, you said it was a 4.7? 4.6, yes, 4.7. Yeah. And I love yeah. that. I love that number of 4.7 because if I see something that's five stars all the time, like any other, yeah. anybody else, you're like, eh, is that for real? Yeah. And okay. Um, here's the first one I found. It was from June 21st. It says, terrible service, ask for tips before service, overcharged, and ruined the new floors at my house. That's a review. Wow. Just like that. Just like that, simple and sweet. Is it um, real? It's her truth, so it's got to be, right? It's her truth, so that was her experience. And so here's a response to what I said. <clears throat> I just said, hi, Susie. Thanks for your feedback. We're sorry your experience was less than perfect. Following your feedback, we have reviewed our account and show a claim filed May 30th regarding your floors. Our claims team has reviewed your claim and offered full payment according to our terms and conditions agreed upon by both parties via written signature before and after your move. That offer was made June 12th. We have yet to get a response from your review, or we have yet to get a response aside from this review. It's currently July 2nd, 2019. And so I, every time I respond to review, I always, I mean, that's why we use so much automation and computer software because everything's trackable. You can't say you didn't get something, you didn't sign something because I got it. You can't say we overcharged because my trucks are even trackable. We have GPS trackers on all the trucks. House Call Pro is trackable. When you sign off, it has a timestamp signature. And so it's really easy. And again, when you just practice doing fair business all the time, it's very easy for you to, and I always tell my guys that like, you should feel very, very confident when you tell these customers these prices and whatever it is, we do fair business and they've never seen anything otherwise. And so I have no, no problem responding to these reviews. And so the second half, I just said, regarding your acquisition of, or your accusation of overcharging, we are proud to be a tech friendly company. That means every move is timestamped with written signatures, start and stop times, along with GPS locations of our teams in real time. We have signatures and confirmation from your move starting at 3.35 p.m. on May 30th and ending at 6.42 p.m. May 30th, totaling three hours and seven minutes. Since we bill in 15 minute increments, and I put in quotes, the best in the industry, nice. you, were bill, you were billed for 3.25 hours of service time. This bill came out to be just $400.41. In addition, our records show that you were sent an estimate two days prior on May 28th at 3.11 p.m. Quotes, also timestamped. <laughs> this estimate was approved for $463. Your final bill with us ended up just being $400.41. We're not sure where you believe you are overcharged. And it was a question. If you'd like to further discuss, please call our office. Thank you. So, wow. you know. I love how thorough that is. And the reason why I asked if it was real or not is because, you know, there's sometimes those trolls out there, the review trolls. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of the, some of the, some of those reviews are like the funniest things I've, I've ever heard really from some of our pros um, in terms of them sharing reviews. Um, and then there's some, some people who are the, actually sadly the competitor or someone yeah, that's true. just trying to knock true. you off and, yeah. uh, and putting a bad review on there. Thanks for sharing that, man. Was it, no, um, no. did it, did it take a while for you to, um, process that and, and, and then create the proper response or. Yeah, I'd never, you know, it's almost like when you, when you're mad, like people always say like sleep on it, never respond at it. Don't do that. Just hold on. So it takes me a minimum three days to 10 days to respond to any negative. review. I want to think about it. I want to process it. I have the little notes in my, in my iPhone. Right. And I just, I, over a couple of days, I get the right language in my in my mind and I think about it and I say, no, I should I should say it like this. Oh, this is more professional. Don't take it personally. All right. That's the worst thing you could do going back and forth with the customer 
on public social media or on Google and your potential future customers are looking at that and they, they're like, well, it's probably not a level of professionalism in that. However, and you know, you could say it either way, as opposed to just taking the blame and letting somebody, you know, drag our name through the mud per se, I always respond with just facts. Like, here's the facts. You receive this at this time on this day at, you know, whatever. And that way, when someone else is reading that, they could still call my bluff and say, well, he probably just made those times and those days up. But again, because I do good business, you could call my bluff anytime you want. I can always pull up any of the trackable stuff. Also, the other step we take is all my calls are recorded. And so my guys sometimes say, and I love, again, House Call Pro shout out because the internal notes in our system, right? So record a call. I have some of my team leads sit in with me sometimes whenever I take these calls and I put everything in the notes. And so sometimes when we get out there, customers, unfortunately, the public, a lot of times try to take advantage of us as service providers. And they don't see it as professional as maybe attorneys or doctors or lawyers. And so what they try to do is save a few bucks here or uh, we didn't really agree to that. They can never say that they didn't because my calls are recorded. I put in the internal notes in the system. My guys know exactly what to expect. And even if they have a little bit of kickback like that, I would literally snip the point of the conversation that we talked about it. I will send you a copy of that estimate that you approved and say, hey, just for your reference or your convenience, here's exactly what we talked about. I didn't know you, you know? were a videographer on the side, man. I mean, just <laughs> taking little snippets and showing them to your customers. It takes me way longer than you, man. It takes me like hours. <laughs> Well, you know, I did want to say something about that before I transition on. You were talking about uh, in the hiring portion. I, I absolutely agree with you. I have to say that. It's like, um, you know, there are people that could be the most talented and then they have the worst attitude. Yeah. I just would never hire them. I just would never yeah. work with them. And the funny thing about it is like I don't have, um, you know, this is why I love House Call Pro too is they gave me a chance. Um, I've been working in like nonprofit communications type work for most of my career. And I know that I could tell a story by talking. And just right. stumbled upon telling a story via video. And I was like, oh, I think I'm onto something here. And so, you know, um, I, I just say that I, I think I, say, I share the same sentiment. And I think that that's how House Call Pro gave me a chance as a, a videographer to join their team, regardless of the lack of experience that I had, that they yeah. saw that I was uh, someone that was eager to learn and, and, and be hungry. Because, you know, that's teachable, hungry, ready to learn, ready mm -hmm. to rise. Those are those are great traits, I think, in any employee. Yeah. And the more you hire and you bring people in, you know, you got to make sure that they gel with your current staff. Right. And so a lot of times, one thing I do as a leader, as soon as I bring somebody in, I tell, I tell the candidate too, Hey, when we bring you in, I'm going to be checking in not only with you, but also my other team members and get their feedback. Because if I'm talking to my guys and they're like, Hey man, he's lazy. He's doing this. Whenever you leave, we'll have a conversation because I think leadership starts with me. So I got to be the example that I expect to see. So I'm going to have a conversation with you. It'll be very clear. It'll be concise. I'll tell you everything that I expect. I won't cut, beat around the bush. It's going to be straight to the point. With that being said, now that you have the information on how I feel about you and what you need to do in order to get better, you're either going to take that and run with it or you're going to take that, keep doing what you're doing. And then I'm going to make my decision and we're going to go a different way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I love how you're just pretty much describing what uh, we hear from our pros all the time is, and, and what we, what we try to communicate to our pros is uh, let us, take care of the monotonous, tedious things so that you can go do the work that you started this business to do. Yeah. And so um, you're talking about covering your bases in the tech and the recordings and you uh, know the tracking and all that stuff. That's that's huge. Um, yeah. as, as we close up our time together, which you've given us so much, so much rich knowledge. Thank you so much. Um, is can you provide a, a word of encouragement out to our pros out out there right now? What would you say to our pros? It always gets better, you know. Uh, every day as an entrepreneur goes up and down, up and down. Um, the only thing that separates me from any other entrepreneur is the level of consistency and determination. Um, there's nobody who hasn't, some people call it failure or a lesson, you know, there's no losses, only lessons. But the, the deal is what you do with those experiences. And so as long as you're willing to get up, get up every day, keep going to work, it doesn't matter if your account's in the negative, it doesn't matter if you just got hit with a, a financial lawsuit, uh, work comp, I had to pay $11,000 fine. Uh, just starting my moving company. And so we had to settle that deal, had a guy get hurt, uh, punctured a rib. Doesn't matter what happens. It's about your level just to keep going, just keep going. Wake up every day, know, have faith, not only uh, in what you've created, but more so yourself as an entrepreneur. You know, if you're ever looking for investors, uh, tip for advice, if you're ever looking for investors, they're investing more in you as an owner operator than they are in a business. 
everyone, you know, if you watch Shark Tank, they say, well, do you work anywhere else or do you just work on this? Mark Cuban and those guys have never invested in an entrepreneur on Shark Tank that has another job. Side hustles don't work. You're either in or you're out. So if you're going to do this, do it, and, and you'll end up being successful. It's, it's the law of attraction and determination. It'll The universe will give you what you're seeking. But if you're seeking it half as then you're not you're not going to get it you know so that's that's my words of encouragement just keep going i think you just pushed over a bunch of pros over the edge they just crossed <laughs> the line right now and they're like i'm doing it <laughs> screw it he told daniel white told me it's time it's time to do it <laughs> well thanks so much for your time daniel i really appreciate it. we're gonna have to have you come back on the show and share more knowledge and looking forward to seeing where your company goes and and uh take care and be safe out there man I appreciate you, brother. Thanks for having me sincerely. Uh, it means a lot to me to be able to share a little bit of time with you and you guys. And Hope to see you guys again here soon. Will do. All right. Take care now. Thanks, brother. Take Bye. care. Bye. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Pro Talk Podcast. For more information, go to housecallpro.com.